Hey everyone, welcome to another time lapse sketching tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how I sketch this scene where the workers are doing road works on the road in front of my place so they are actually making a lot of noise and here are the workers and before they started with the road works they were actually upgrading a bus stop across the street which took four to six months so that was way longer than i expected and this is going to last for a few weeks at least i'm pretty sure this is the reference photo I'm using, which you can download from the video description below if you want to follow along and sketch with me. By the way, this time-lapse tutorial is, as usual, the condensed version of the full-length tutorial I have made for my patrons. So if you want to support me and my YouTube channel, consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can get access to even more full-length tutorials. The sketchbook I'm using is the Etcher Cold Press Watercolor Sketchbook and the pen I'm using is the Pelican M200 with Sketch Ink which is waterproof when dry. So I started by drawing the lamppost on the left because it has to overlap the tree and the tree will overlap the digger. It's good to have overlapping elements because this will create a sense of depth. This will create foreground and background elements. When it comes to drawing this digger or any mechanical objects, it's good to draw slowly, like really spend the time to observe what you're drawing. Many of these mechanical objects or vehicles can be quite technical because there are a lot of cables, there are different parts, there are big parts, small parts, there is perspective. So there is a lot of things going on. So it's good to spend some time to really observe um, and draw what you see and not what you think you see. My original intention for this sketch was to draw it across two pages, but at this point, Point, I realized that I may not be able to draw across two pages. There are actually some red and white barricades at the bottom, but I did not leave enough space for those, so I have actually drawn my sketch larger than what I expected, which is alright, because now that I look at the sketch on hindsight, this looks like the correct size to draw. Anyway, it would be good to plan your composition with pencil first, especially for complicated scenes before you start drawing. So for this sketch, I'm just going with the flow. I just start straight with ink and see how it goes. This is the second digger, which if you look at the photo, is actually not at the road opening there. So I've drawn this digger here because I made some mistakes with the with the with where the diggers are and where the road divider is. So now I'm just placing this digger here. Now when you're drawing people from a farm, all the height of the people, the human figures, will be similar. But when you are drawing people from the street level with the usual one or two point perspective, the height of the human figures will vary depending on your viewpoint and of course the perspective. But when you're drawing from afar, usually all those human figures will be of the same height. So you have to draw them proportionately. And now I'm just adding some trees in the background to create more overlapping elements. When drawing tree trunks, uh, try to follow the shapes uh, that you see, try to follow the angles that you see. You rarely see perfectly straight lines in nature. So if you draw your tree trunk with a perfectly straight line or your branches with straight lines, those branches and tree trunks will look unnatural. Here I'm just adding some cones and adding some details 
I'm drawing this sketch with a uh, light touch, so I'm not pressing down too hard on my fountain pen to keep the lines thin. And after the ink has dried, um, just painting over the greens first, the trees and the grass. The watercolor I'm using today is the Roman Schmal watercolor that I received as a free gift from the company. I actually have a few sets of Roman Schmal watercolor that I purchased a few years ago during the Urban Sketches Symposium in Amsterdam, if I remember correctly. Or maybe I was given those watercolor sets. <laughs> I can't really remember. Anyway, um, this is my first time using the Roman Schmal watercolor and the quality of the watercolor is good. The watercolor and the mixes are able to flow and settle predictably. So the performance is quite consistent. I did not sense anything amiss with the paint. So for painting, I started by painting the large areas first. The greens and the roads, the walking path. And next, I will move on to paint the details such as the barriers, the cones, the diggers, and the workers. The brush that I'm using is the Windsor & Newton Series 7 Sable brush, which I actually gave a very negative review for. And after using this brush for more than a year, the brush hair seems to be uh, tapering now. When it started out, the brush hair uh, wasn't able to taper. The brush just looks like a mop brush, but after using it for a year, uh, the hair is slowly starting to stick together, which is weird. Anyway, um, the company, as in Jackson's Art, they sent me a replacement for the brush and it didn't work out that well either. And this is that replacement brush. Okay, so for the darker greens, I'm actually adding more thalo blue. I like to use thalo blue and, sorry, I like to add thalo blue and ultramarine to the greens to create the shadow areas. And for the digger, it's mostly thalo blue with slight yellow added. For the red, I'm using Pyro Scarlet PR255. The yellow is PY168, named as Aquarius Yellow. For the blues, I've used Ultramarine PB29 and Thalo Blue Red Shade PB156. I've also used a lot of Sap Green Light, made with PY110 and PG7. And I've also used Burnt Sienna Monte Amiata PBR7. I would say this is still considered a limited color palette, just that there are some convenient colors added, such as burnt sienna and sap green, which I use a lot. Whenever there are a lot of plants or greens or grass or trees in my scene, I will use sap green, and I will make the green darker by adding thalo blue or ultramarine. So now you see me paint the darker areas. Uh, that's mixed with Pyro Scarlet and Thalo Blue. It is possible to mix darker colors uh, like black or dark gray with Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna, but it's much easier to use a Thalo Blue and a Warm Red. The markers I'm using today is the Moloto One for All Opaque Markers. I'm not using the Posca markers because my daughter um, has almost destroyed those markers. The tip of those markers are now quite blunt and many of them are running out of ink, which is why I'm now using this new set of markers, which is, uh, which is working really well. So this sketch is almost complete. The main thing about this sketch is to show the workers working, basically show the activity that is happening. So I've also used color pencils to add more texture and I realized I had forgotten to paint the tree trunks. So I'm adding or painting the tree trunks with black ink 
with the fountain pen. The tree trunks are usually very dark, so you can use black ink to draw over the tree trunks. So here's a close up on the sketch. You can see my human figures, uh, they are not very detailed. And I left out that spot there, which should have been painted over. Alright, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video. Bye!